I know Diana doesn't like me. She only married me out of spite for her ex-boyfriend. Three years after our marriage, their scandal was all over the trending searches. I was mocked by netizens as a cheating husband. But I never got angry at her. Nor would I divorce her. She doesn't know that I'm dying. And I just want to spend my remaining time by her side. Yet. Even this small wish of mine. She is unwilling to fulfill. Diana didn't come home tonight. I saw her on the trending searches. As the most popular actress right now. She was surrounded by stars. Sitting in the center of attention. Diana wore a red dress. Just as she did when we first met. Looking just as hot and beautiful. I don't mind her playing around outside. Because whenever she comes home. Diana would always cuddle with me and say coyly. Those rumors are just the company's way of increasing my popularity. I've always had only you. I believed her. But today. I'm a bit scared. Because I saw a familiar figure among those people. Her ex-boyfriend. Mike. Suddenly. My phone rang. It was Sister Sophia. Diana's manager. Diana is drunk. Come and pick her up. I quickly got up but felt dizzy. And my nose started to bleed. I paused for a moment and wiped it off casually. It's just an incurable hereditary disease. Nothing more important than picking up my Diana. I can't let her know. She's timid and can't stand the sight of blood. I rushed to get there as quickly as I could. But what I saw was Mike holding Diana in a corner of the bar. Mike. Give her back to me. He looked up at me. His sharp eyebrows and rebellious demeanor just as always. Oh. So you really did fulfill your wish and marry Diana. I directly took her from him. Holding her in my arms. Finally feeling some comfort. I'm leaving. I wanted to quickly leave this uncomfortable place. But Mike's smug voice sounded behind me. Do you know why Diana got drunk here? Because I just came back to the country. And she couldn't wait to throw me a welcome back party. I took a deep breath. Suppressing my anger. I know Diana is kind hearted. There's no need to say more. I put her in the car. And Diana drowsily opened her eyes and smiled at me. Victor. You're here. I looked at her dependent expression. And my heart softened. I lowered my head and kissed her on the brow. Comforting her. Honey's here to take you home. Go to sleep. M.M. She nodded obediently and fell into a deep sleep. Everyone thought she didn't love me, just because three years ago, Mike rejected her in public and chose to go abroad. Out of spite, she put the ring on my finger and married me. I became the guy who everyone thought got lucky, marrying a fair-skinned, beautiful movie star, but no one knew how happy I was. Everyone said that once Mike came back, Diana would definitely leave me and get back with him. But in the three years we were together, Diana grew to love me more and more, and we got along better and better. She couldn't cook. But she learned to make porridge and soup to take care of my weak stomach. She would act cute just to have an extra piece of ice cream during her period. She would explain every time a rumor appeared. And stop taking roles with explicit content for me. Even using stand-ins for kissing scenes. At our best. She held me and seriously asked if I wanted a child. As a star. She knew how bad pregnancy and childbirth would be for her. But she still wanted to have our child. I believed we were truly in love. Until the day I was diagnosed with a terminal illness in the hospital. I didn't know how to tell Diana. We hadn't even finished discussing what to name our first child. But then Mike came back. And she threw him a welcome back party at the best bar in town. That night. They talked for a long time. The next day. Diana suddenly wanted to take me to a party. It turned out that Mike had returned to the country to raise funds. His project abroad had failed miserably. And the entire Song family was struggling. As the future heir of the Song family. The once noble young master Song had to bow his head and seek investments. When Diana brought me in. The place was already in an uproar. The atmosphere was heated. Mike was drinking with a man. His face flushed. Young Master Song. Didn't you say you wanted investments? Fine. I'll drink one cup. You drink ten. If you can outdrink me. I'll invest in you immediately. He drank cup after cup. With a nonchalant and careless smile. But as soon as Diana and I walked in. His smile froze. Then he started drinking even more vigorously. And perhaps he choked. Lowering his head to cough violently. Seeing Diana. The people around started to jeer. Young Master Song. Weren't you and Diana a couple before? You could ask the great actress Diana for help. Anyway. Diana has had plenty of scandals outside. It's not impossible for her to support you. Bang. Unexpectedly. Mike. With reddened eyes. Directly punched that man to the ground. Damn it. You brat dare to hit me. Don't even think about the investment. I'll sue you too. The men got up and cursed. But Mike roared in anger. Say whatever you want about me. But don't you dare say a word about Diana. It's me who wronged her. I clearly felt Diana's grip on my hand tighten. Her whole body tense. Then she smiled. With a clear coldness. You can joke about anything. But my husband is right here. Mike is a disgusting scumbag. There's no way I would help him. Everyone immediately started flattering us. Praising us as a loving couple. A model pair in the entertainment industry. I smiled without speaking. But my heart grew colder and colder. Diana rarely asked me to attend parties because she knew I didn't like them. 
So, did she bring me here for Mike? If he weren't here, Diana definitely wouldn't have come, right? Seeing Diana truly not helping him, the men who got punched laughed even more arrogantly. I heard your song family is bankrupt. Do you still think you're the beloved young master of three years ago? If you kneel down now and lick my shoes clean, I won't sue you and will even invest in you. How about that? With that, he extended his shoe, stained with alcohol. Clearly, he was thoroughly enjoying humiliating the once proud scion. Mike stood straight, lowering his head, his fists slowly clenching. Just as everyone thought he was going to hit someone again, he knelt on one knee. Everyone was shocked. I noticed Diana's gaze was fixed on him too, the once lawless, rebellious young master song from three years ago actually knelt down for the sake of a few million in investment. He spoke with difficulty, lifting his head, seemingly with tears glinting in his eyes, I'm not kneeling for your investment, I'm apologizing to a woman I deeply hurt, three years ago, I didn't know how to cherish her, so I lost the most precious thing in the world, I'm sorry, I truly regret it, the room fell silent, everyone knew Mike was apologizing to Diana seeking her forgiveness, but as her husband, standing right next to her, what should I do? The men felt he had been played and kicked my card, knocking him down, stop it. Diana finally couldn't hold back and rushed over to stop him, my manager and lawyer will handle the compensation, now get out. The powerful aura of the movie queen made the men leave with his tail between his legs, everyone in the room was watching me, expecting me to step up like a man and take my wife away, but I felt a wave of dizziness, hurriedly covering my nose, and dashed out the door. I couldn't let Diana see me with a nosebleed. After I managed to clean up, I returned to the room, but there was no one left. The waiter told me Diana had paid and left, taking Mike with her. So, I was left behind. When I got home, I couldn't sleep all night, and Diana didn't come back either. At 3 a.m., I suddenly saw a post on Diana's Weibo. It was a side profile of her sleeping on a couch. The caption read, You are the soft spot beneath my hard armor. The comment section quickly filled up. The shippers were the most enthusiastic, the fallen noble young master x the stunning movie queen, my ship has finally resurrected. Many others commented, three years ago, they were the hottest couple, finally, they are back together. Support Diana in rekindling her love, I can't stand that ugly man Victor, he has no physique, no looks, he doesn't match our movie queen at all. They were all mocking me, but I was just relieved, luckily, Diana didn't sleep with him, I didn't want to pay attention. But then someone posted a photo of Diana and me together in the comments. In the photo, I look thin and ordinary in my plaid shirt. Not exactly ugly, but I didn't match at all with Diana, who looked radiant and stunning. I'm really about to vomit. Ugly men should stay away from beauties. Support the movie queen to get a divorce quickly. They don't look like a couple at all. Then a bunch of shippers posted old photos of her and Mike from three years ago. Every picture looked like a TV drama with a handsome man and beautiful woman. Two words, perfect match. Diana. Don't fall for ugly guys. Find a handsome man. See how perfect you two look together. All female stars, repeat after me a hundred times, don't date ugly guys, and definitely don't marry them. This quickly turned into a public outcry against female stars dating ugly men. This post also topped the trending searches. Soon, Diana responded. I don't have a thing for ugly men. I did get back together with Mike. This instantly set the internet ablaze. They all claimed it was a victory, successfully restoring the movie Queen's taste. My hands and feet went cold as I watched, feeling dizzy. Blood started dripping from my nose, soon staining my pants red. My vision blurred, and I struggled to call my good friend Marco. Take, take me to the hospital. Clean up the blood at home. Your wife's affair is outrageous. What's wrong? Hey, hey, hey. I passed out, just hoping Marco would clean up the blood at home. Diana faints at the sight of blood. I didn't want her to feel uncomfortable. When I woke up, Marco was looking at me with red eyes, coldly mocking me. Victor. This is the woman you made a mess of yourself to marry, you big fool. You gave up your position as the young master of the Song family for her. Now your wife has been taken away, you have a terminal illness, and you fall into this state. Isn't it laughable? I moved my body and found that I was fine, breathing a sigh of relief. She doesn't know about this. It's my own choice. A pretty funny and melodramatic story. Actually, I'm the real son of the Song family. I got lost when I was a child, and that's how Mike was adopted and became the young master of the Song family. I found out about this in college. At that time, I happened to fall in love with Diana, who was dating Mike. Later, I used the identity of the young master of the Song family to force Mike to break up and go abroad. The condition was that I would never return to the Song family, and he couldn't tell Diana about it. But now, with the Song family bankrupt, Mike has come back to take Diana away. I have a terminal illness and am powerless. Maybe this is karma. I looked at the pale ceiling and laughed. Marco had already asked the doctor, 
and I could only get conservative treatment. Maybe you should just let it go. After all, Diana never loved you from the start. My heart ached at those words, and the image of the photo I saw on Weibo last night flashed in my mind. Forcibly picked fruit is not sweet, but at least it quenches thirst when picked. Forget it. Don't talk nonsense. We're doing fine. Marco lowered his head and wiped away a tear. I'm really unlucky to have a love-obsessed friend like you. You're dying and still thinking about a wife who doesn't love you. I laughed out loud, I'm really lucky to have a friend who cares about me so much. Marco laughed too, just like when we first met in the school infirmary. Back then, he got into a fight with some thugs because of his straightforward personality and ended up in the infirmary. And I, with my frail body, had fainted during military training and also ended up in the infirmary. From that moment, we inexplicably became brothers and never separated. We were silent for a long time, and then he suddenly spoke. Seriously, you should divorce her, and then I'll take you on a trip to Tibet. Didn't you always want to go to Tibet? My words got stuck in my throat, not knowing what to say. Yes, my biggest dream in this life was to see the blue, clear sky, the endless grasslands, and the lavender fields. Most importantly, the grandmother at the orphanage told me she was from Tibet, and her biggest dream was to return to her roots. I had asked Diana many times if we could go to Tibet together when she wasn't so busy with work. She always verbally agreed, then turned around and started preparing for her next movie. Seeing Marco's serious expression, I knew he wasn't joking this time. He just wanted to make sure my final days were spent with dignity. Let me think about it. My words circled in my throat, but I still didn't agree to it. Maybe, if Diana truly loves me and can't bear to part with me, how could I leave first? I returned home, and Diana hurriedly came to me, grabbing my hand to explain. I didn't post that Weibo. I fell asleep on the couch that night, and Mike posted it himself. As soon as I saw the news, I came home immediately. Why weren't you at home? Where did you go? You look so pale. I forced a smile, lowered my head, and hugged her waist tightly, greedily inhaling her faint fragrance. But there was a hint of men's cologne mixed with her scent. I'm fine. I believe you. She sighed with relief and hugged me back tightly. Forget it. I didn't want to argue anymore. After that day, things on the internet got worse, and Mike sent me a message to meet. At his house. When I saw him, he was smoking, surrounded by smoke, with a few bottles of freshly drunk whiskey on the table. Sit. I sat down and poured myself a glass of water. My purpose for coming back to the country this time is to take back my woman. Victor, you understand what I mean, right? He exhaled a puff of smoke and squinted at me. I smiled. Diana is my wife. We are legally married. You, the homewrecker, seem a bit out of your mind. He paused his smoking, then stubbed out his cigarette. You've made some progress since I last saw you. If it weren't for Marco in high school, I could have beaten you to death. Now you're talking big. I shrugged nonchalantly. Try hitting me now. I'll fall to the ground immediately and claim 50,000 from you. Oh, I forgot, your Song family is bankrupt. You, the once grand young master Song, now have to accompany people drinking to get investments. You look pretty good, maybe you could try working at a duck club and see if the Song family can recover from your earnings. His face darkened, and he threw the bottle in his hand. Bang. Then he threw a left hook, fast and fierce. But I wasn't weak either. I had learned taekwondo and dodged easily, landing a solid punch on his stomach. Ugh. His face turned pale as he clutched his stomach and stepped back several steps. Fuck, you ungrateful bastard. Then he grabbed a stick from the side and swung it at me. I could have dodged easily, but suddenly my head felt heavy, that damn familiar feeling returned, and I stumbled forward, taking two hits. After two hits, I fell to the ground, vomiting blood continuously. He hit hard. I could feel my organs being damaged. I thought you'd be tougher, but after three years, you're still just trash. He threw the stick down and squatted in front of me, mocking me. I struggled to get up and punched him hard in the face again. Just then, a familiar voice sounded from behind, what's going on here? When I turned around, I saw Diana standing at the door with a fruit basket, looking at me in shock. She quickly walked over, frowning at the blood on the ground and asked Mike, why did you hit Victor? Don't you know he's not in good health? Mike's eyes reddened, but he stubbornly held back his tears. He called me a homewrecker and came here to teach me a lesson, so I fought back. Diana, do you think I'm such a low person? If it weren't for you, I would never interfere in anyone's marriage. These words moved Diana again. She sighed deeply and turned to me. Victor, go home. I'll handle this. My stomach burned with pain, but it couldn't compare to the pain in my heart. I tried to stay calm. Diana, come home with me, I'm hurt. Diana looked at me, with a hint of confusion and sadness in her eyes, and shook her head. Go home. I'm going to have dinner with Mike. I don't want to see you right now. 
I smiled bitterly, clutching my stomach, feeling the searing pain. Why? I'm your husband. Her tears fell, filled with struggle and pain. Then why did you force Mike to go abroad and break up with me three years ago? Wasn't that wrong? My head buzzed, the coldness in my heart spreading to every part of my body. In the end, Diana found out the truth. Before I could continue explaining, Mike stepped between us. There's nothing more to say. The truth is out. Victor, you're out. His eyes were full of malicious provocation, extremely proud. I felt another nosebleed coming and had to turn and run away in embarrassment. It's okay, I believe Diana will forgive me. I made mistakes before, but that was in the past. I don't believe this is the end for us, but I was wrong. When I woke up in the hospital again, the internet was flooded with slander against me. Mike had made our deal from three years ago public, selectively revealing the truth about the real and fake young master situation, focusing on how I forced him to break up and took advantage of the situation to marry Diana. My reputation was completely ruined. Now the entire internet was calling for Diana to divorce me quickly. Can you just die, ugly men, scum? Forcing a couple to break up and go abroad. Ugh, it's so disgusting. Human Scum Behavior Awards How can such a despicable person exist? Oh my god, isn't that illegal? Why doesn't he just die? Police, please arrest him, it's so disgusting. Divorce quickly, I can't believe my movie queen sister was deceived for three years. I'm so angry. Divorce immediately. Even my address was exposed. People threw rotten eggs at me, poured feces, threw rotten vegetables, and lit candles on my Weibo, telling me to die. The windows of my house were all smashed. I didn't care about any of this, as I had endured much more of such violence in my youth. A few days later, I was knocked out by a rock thrown by an anti-fan. Before I closed my eyes, I seemed to see Diana running towards me in a panic. I'm bleeding. Will Diana be scared? Mike has always hated me. He went to the same high school as me, and I always topped the class, keeping him in second place. So, he started bullying me in private. This included, but was not limited to, pouring water on me, tearing up my homework, beating me up, and smearing glue on my chair. Because the Song family was wealthy and influential, the school turned a blind eye and only asked Mike not to go too far, so I could still take the college entrance exam. After all, I was a promising candidate for Tsinghua and Peking University. After I got lost, I lived in an orphanage. Once, the grandmother who raised me came to visit. She saw me being beaten up by Mike and his gang in an alley. She was furious. At nearly 70 years old, she raised her cane and struck Mike on the head. He, in a fit of rage, pushed her. She fell to the ground and died of a heart attack. The Song family gave me a large sum of money, enough to cover my university education, on the condition that I erase the incident. I collapsed to the ground, crying bitterly, and accepted the money with tears in my eyes. Because Mike was a minor, even if I reported it to the police, nothing could be done to him. I donated all that money to the orphanage, hoping it could take care of more orphans, fulfilling grandmother's wish. Every time I saw her empty room, my heart ached unbearably. I swore I would make Mike pay. Later, I met Marco, who protected me and helped me finish high school. In university, I met Diana. She was so beautiful and kind, but she was with Mike. During a school physical, I discovered by chance that I had a hereditary disease, a disease only the Song family had. So, I found a way to get a strand of Mrs. Song's hair and secretly did a DNA test. It was absurd. The woman who arrogantly bought off my grandmother's life in high school was my biological mother. The seed of my hatred ignited, and I naturally didn't want to return to the Song family, nor did I want to get nothing out of it. I went to Mike. He, of course, didn't hesitate to abandon Diana and chose the identity of the Song family's young master. He said, money is the true principle of this world. To make room for me, he chose to go abroad, breaking up with Diana. All because of Mike, but why should he now return without any guilt and take everything from me? Impossible. I won't let go easily. I groggily opened my eyes and saw Diana lying by my bedside. I reached out to touch her hair, waking her up. You're awake, Victor, are you okay? Her usual delicate makeup was gone, leaving her face bare and looking utterly exhausted. Diana, I'm fine. I'm doing great. But she broke down, crying loudly, you say you're fine, but you're sick, and it's terminal. I held her, gently comforting her. It's okay, I'll get better soon. Don't forget, I'm your miracle brother. She froze, her pupils dilating instantly. You're the miracle brother who took me home when I was little. The truth is, I've loved her for a long time. We are the same age. When we were seven, I saw Diana lost. She was dressed exquisitely, standing in the middle of the road, looking confused. I saw an ordinary-looking woman trying to take her away. I rushed over, kicking and biting, and took Diana with me. 
Brother, I don't know where my mom is. I only remember a place with a pink unicorn. Seeing her crying uncontrollably, I took on the task of finding her mom. I'll definitely find your mom. She paused, eyes red, and asked if I was serious. I nodded and patted her shoulder. Of course, I'm your miracle brother. But that wasn't true. I took her to the orphanage, spent three days going from street to street, and finally found her mom's shop and brought her back. I was too young to know to call the police. Pretty silly, my shoes were worn out. But the ending was good. Diana wouldn't become an orphan like me, left to be bullied. Knowing this, Diana cried even more. Soon, the online slander was cleared away, and Diana clarified that we were truly in love. She also told all her fans that she would never divorce me in this lifetime, and if they didn't like Victor, they could unfollow her. This was the first time Diana responded so directly to online comments, and soon many people started saying we were a loving couple. Actually, Diana and Victor are great together. Diana doesn't even do kissing scenes anymore. Isn't that love? Since Diana and Victor got together, her emotions have been stable. She smiles a lot, and she spends holidays with him. She's clearly married to the right person. You say Mike and her look good together, but I think it doesn't seem real. The smiles when Diana is with Victor are full of genuine feelings. All love. Am I the only one who doesn't think Victor is ugly? He's just too thin. Diana stayed with me throughout my treatment, pushing back all her filming commitments to take care of me wholeheartedly. But Mike wouldn't give up. Today, Diana was gently feeding me the soup she had made herself, her eyes full of tenderness. But the next second, her phone rang. She immediately put down the spoon, her face changing and went out to answer the call. Then, even after the soup had gone cold, she didn't come back. I watched the sunset outside the window gradually disappear. From daylight to darkness, my heart being crushed bit by bit, she didn't return all night, nor did she reply to my messages. That night, I was so hungry that my stomach went into spasms. A nurse found me during rounds, pale and bleeding from my nose. It was the first time I was taken to the emergency room. When I woke up, I heard a commotion outside. It was Marco yelling at someone. Just leave Victor alone. Damn it. He gave up his identity as the Song family's young master for you. He's practically losing his life for you. Can you just let him go? I know I've wronged him. Diana's choked voice replied. Don't act all pathetic here. If I didn't have a rule against hitting women, you'd be on your knees today. You ran off the moment Mike called, leaving Victor to almost die in the hospital. How could you do something like that? Marco spat angrily. He's not going to live long anyway. And now he nearly died just to give your lover his place. It's not like that. He said he had a car accident. And I panicked and went to him. I. Enough. Shut up. Go wherever you want. But get a divorce from Victor and set him free. The hallway fell silent. Diana didn't say another word. Only her sobs could be heard. I felt like I couldn't breathe. Marco. Come in first. Hearing my voice. They both came in. Diana's eyes were still filled with tears. Looking extremely pitiful. For the first time. I looked at her coldly. I said. Let Marco in. You go out. The soup had gone cold and so had my heart. When I was about to die in the emergency room, my mind wasn't filled with Diana or anyone else, but Tibet. I heard that Tibet holds the most devout beliefs, and the sacred mountains and lakes there can sense things. I want to scatter my grandmother's ashes there and tell her that I've finally brought her back home. Diana bit her lip. Maybe it was the first time I had treated her this way, and she felt uncomfortable. She turned and left angrily. I looked at Marco and smiled at him. Brother, let's go to Tibet. He came up and rubbed my bald head which was empty from chemotherapy, nodding with a tearful smile. If you don't want to smile, don't. It's just a woman. We don't need her. We'll go to Tibet together. Okay. I responded softly, feeling more relaxed than ever. Diana, I don't want to wait for you anymore. If you could abandon me once for Mike, you could do it a second time, but I can't wait for the day you'll truly turn back for me. Your miracle brother needs to live for himself this time. Tibet. I finally arrived. I put on my down jacket, wore my hat and followed Marco's steps up the snowy mountains and the Potala Palace. We admired the magnificent scenery and laid my grandmother to rest in the most beautiful spot. At this moment, in the square of the Potala Palace, there was a group of people prostrating themselves in prayer. I coughed a few times and asked someone nearby, what are they praying for? A Tibetan man answered me in broken Mandarin, explaining that they were praying with pure kindness, prostrating themselves to bless the future world and wish all living beings peace and happiness. Marco and I were deeply moved. It turns out there really are such pure-hearted people in the world, without any desire, without the stench of money or power, only an unblemished heart. I looked at the sunrise over the golden mountains, thinking of my impending death, and suddenly felt enlightened. Marco, I want to prostrate too. He was shocked and tried to stop me. You're crazy. You're already terminally ill. Doing this will make you die even faster. I smiled, took off my scarf, went to the street to buy the necessary items for the pilgrimage, 
and began the prostration route from Lesa to Yamdrak Yamso. I remember when my grandmother was young. She told me with a storybook in hand that she had walked this path. So I wanted to experience the beauty of this road myself. Marco, worried, followed me with medicine. The journey was about 1,100 kilometers. Starting from Lesa, I was naturally recognized by Diana's fans during the pilgrimage. One of them even started live streaming, mocking me with a smile. Everyone, look, the shameless husband of the movie queen is prostrating. Isn't this just to get attention? For a time, a huge influx of viewers entered his live stream. Guadamu, proud and smug, continued to ridicule me, increasing the hype. I think he's just putting on a show. Everyone knows that prostrating is extremely tough, and only a very few can complete it. I ignored him, prostrating myself again and again, wearing out my knees bit by bit without uttering a sound, because this was the land my grandmother had once walked inch by inch. One day, two days, three days, ten days passed, and everyone in the live stream was shocked by me. My knees, palms, and forehead were covered with wounds from countless prostrations. I also had to stop from time to time to wipe the blood from my nose. A doctor who knew me mentioned my terminal illness in the live stream. Without my knowledge, public opinion about me on the internet had completely reversed. People started apologizing to me, admiring my perseverance, but I didn't care about any of that. Every time I finished prostrating at a place, I would stop to donate some money. Guadamu, who had been live streaming me for so long, started getting curious. Victor, why do you donate so much money? Looking at the live stream camera, I suddenly thought of the children at the orphanage, because I'm an orphan. I hope the money I donate can make the orphans in the world a bit luckier. As soon as I said this, a group of people began to dig into my background. They found out that I was a top student, an orphan without parents, living alone until now. Suddenly, I smiled. In fact, I wasn't originally an orphan. I was taken in by the orphanage after I got lost, so I am very grateful to them. After saying this, I didn't explain further and continued my prostrations. After dropping such a bombshell, the internet began a fervent search for my parents. It was just netizens trying to redeem themselves, doing something to ease their consciences. At this time, a detailed essay about my experiences went viral online. Far away in Shanghai, Mike was completely panicked. Diana and he had a fierce confrontation, which happened to be secretly filmed and posted online. Marco vividly described the scene to me. In the bustling street, dressed in a white suit, Diana, with a grim face, slapped Mike hard. With tears in her eyes, Diana painfully questioned him. Why do this to Victor? What did he ever do to you? Mike, his eyes red, viciously kicked Diana causing the onlookers to gasp in shock. What a beast. Hitting a woman. Some in the crowd, aware of the backstory, clicked their tongues in disdain. Scum men and trash woman, they deserve it. Mike seemed indifferent. He straightened up and smiled slightly, because he played me first. In reality, he can never go back to the Song family. He wasn't just lost. He was deliberately left at the orphanage door by the Song family. Because of his congenital hereditary disease, which is incurable, and the Song family parents couldn't bear having their carefully raised heir be someone who could die at any moment. That's why they abandoned Victor. The Song family never wanted him, so he came to threaten me. I was the foolish one, too insecure at the time, still young, so I believed all his lies and broke up with you. Now there's a perfect opportunity to make things right, why won't you be with me? His face showed confusion and a coldness, just like the rest of the Song family. I'd rather die than be with you. I already have someone I love, and we are very happy. Diana got up from the ground, gritting her teeth as she spoke. Mike's face darkened, then twisted with anger as he yelled. It's laughable. Really, the only reason I broke up with you was that I got tired of you. You aren't even that pretty. Your body is average, and your personality is terrible. I can't understand why Victor worships you, using all his energy to love you, if it weren't for your money. Do you think I'd stay here, a woman like you? I've slept with you so much I'm sick of it. Hearing this, Diana trembled with rage, her eyes red her heart torn to pieces. She realized that the only person who truly cared for her was the one she had deeply hurt. She needed to atone for her mistakes. Diana wiped her tears, regaining her cold and emotionless demeanor of a superstar. Then the Song family will never rise again. Every one of you should be buried, including you. You owe him two lives. With that, she turned and walked away. Mike, left behind, laughed maniacally, clutching his stomach. Ha ha ha. What about you? Are you without fault? Diana turned away tears streaming down her face, but she walked on, biting her lip. She thought of Victor, scarred and injured in Tibet, and felt as if a knife was cutting her heart. She wanted to bring her love back, especially since he didn't have much time left, but she couldn't. She had to avenge all the wrongs done to Victor before she could face him again. As for what people saw online, it was naturally my story. This detailed essay narrated how I went from being the young master of the Song family to an orphan, 
than being brutally bullied by Mike in high school, leading to my grandmother's death from a heart attack caused by them. It also explained how I knew Diana since childhood and had saved her life. In college, I discovered my biological family and used this information to make a deal with Mike. He chose status and position, completely abandoning Diana. The essay included photos of me looking frail in the orphanage, being bullied in high school, and my numb expression at my grandmother's funeral. Finally, it showed the online insults I endured after Mike returned to China, and pictures of me after being diagnosed with a terminal illness, with my hair shaved off, emaciated like a skeleton, wearing a hospital gown. Any one of these experiences would have caused most people to break down. But here I was, standing in Tibet, with a calm demeanor, continuing my pilgrimage with a serene heart. Compared to before, I had gained some weight, my skin had tanned to a bronze color, and I actually looked healthier at first glance. The internet exploded. No one expected Mike, a fake young master, to be so arrogant. Bullying, killing, stealing another man's wife, his crimes were beyond words. Then, the walls came tumbling down, and more people began exposing Mike's misdeeds. He had smoked, drank, and gambled since his teenage years, and bullied students who outperformed him academically. He pursued Diana in college because of a ridiculous bet. He noticed I had fallen for Diana, so he bet with his cronies that he could win over the school beauty within three months. The Song family's bankruptcy was also due to his gambling abroad. After Diana and Mike's street fight, she meticulously set a trap for him. Mike was soon caught for gambling, with multiple charges adding up. This time, the Song family couldn't save him. After ensuring Mike was well taken care of in prison, Diana rushed to Tibet. The sun was scorching that day, almost burning her delicate face. Seeing me, covered in scars, she broke down, crying continuously and even kneeling to apologize to me. Please. Let's go to the hospital. We'll go to the best hospital for treatment. Okay, you can get better. Don't torture yourself here. She cried, following me, speaking as she walked, but I didn't look at her, continuing my prostrations. I never cheated on you. I've always loved you. He lied to me about the car accident and begged me, so I helped him out of pity. Believe me. Victor, aren't you my miracle brother? Diana cried miserably, her face bare and without makeup. Unlike her usual delicate beauty, the entire Song family was sold to Southeast Asia because of their debts. I didn't lend a single penny to Mike. I've avenged you. Please, just look back at me. She knelt, crying, begging for my forgiveness. I paused when I heard this, sighing. I turned to look at her. Diana, I don't love you anymore. We're done. I'm still your wife. She stubbornly shook her head, refusing to let go. I looked up at the kites flying and the eagles soaring freely in the sky. That's just a piece of paper. Meaningless. As a man, that marriage certificate wasn't important to me. When I loved Diana, I would have died for her, but now that I don't love her, whatever she does is irrelevant to me, go back, I will finish this journey, Diana didn't leave, she and Marco stayed with me, watching me as I continued my prostrations, the journey was 1100 kilometers, whether it rained or shone brightly, I kept moving forward, slowly, I found my heart becoming cleaner, I used to be angry, sad, and desperate, but along this journey, I became more and more peaceful, in the end, the hereditary disease didn't spare me. I could no longer breathe. My organs were in severe pain. My nose bled. And I collapsed at Namso. Namso is one of the largest lakes in Tibet. Also known as the Heavenly Jewel. They hurried to call for emergency help. But I stopped them. Because right now. I felt like I was lying in my grandmother's arms. Very comfortable. The sky was as blue as a sapphire. A cloudless sunny day. I remembered the moment before my grandmother passed away. Her gray. White hair spread out on the ground. Like the scene of an aging heroine in a black and white movie, she lay in my arms, her face blue and purple, her lips blackened. Grandmother told me about the tradition of their tribe, when people die, they are to be buried with a smile. Mar, Marco, his face was flushed red, covered in tears, wrinkled together, looking so ugly. Don't cry, grandmother said, Zhao Zhao, we cried when we were born, why shouldn't we smile when we say goodbye? I also said with a smile, we cried when we were born. Why shouldn't we smile when we say goodbye? He froze. His crying stopped. Ha 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 ha. His laughter overlapped in my eyes. As if I was holding my grandmother in that dark alley. He was crying without tears. I was laughing without joy. I also laughed as I stopped breathing. At least in this life. I have gained. Lost. And worshipped. In the end. I became grandmother's family as I wished. Always accompanying her back to heaven. Extra. Marco's perspective. The first time I met Victor. I knew this guy was tough. He had immense strength hidden in his frail body. Most people would have been depressed after being bullied by Mike for two years, but he remained silent, always maintaining the top position in his grade. We met in the infirmary during our senior year military training. All right, I decided to watch over this kid. He really resonated with me. 
Later, when we went to college, I found out he was actually the young master of the Song family. Even crazier, this guy was willing to give up that identity for a woman. You're truly insane. I had never seen someone so obsessed with love. But he just laughed, his frail shoulders seeming to want to carry a mountain. You don't understand. This is love. Later, they got married as they wished and seemed pretty happy. But then, Mike came back. Damn, I need a moment to calm down. I'm really angry. Why do good people in this world die young while the scoundrels live on? Victor had a terminal illness, a hereditary disease that was incurable. His parents hadn't taken care of him a single day since he got lost at the age of three, yet they left him with a fatal hereditary disease. What was even more disgusting was that Diana, like a fickle woman, wavered between sides. Later, when I saw my buddy being cyberbullied, I got even angrier. During that time, I ran around, using my connections in the police department to gather all of Victor's life experiences, and I wrote an essay about it. I was waiting for the right time to publish it. But then, Victor almost died. I had thought that Diana clearing up things online was a sign of conscience, but she almost killed Victor. After arguing with Diana, I saw the light in Victor's eyes go out. He didn't want to go to Tibet. He wanted to leave this place that filled him with despair. Mike had taken his family, killed his grandmother, and now wanted to take his beloved wife too. Victor had lost the will to live, and before he died, he wanted to see Tibet, the place his grandmother once lived. For the first time, I wanted to cry. Sorry. I need a moment. I finally took him there. At the Potala Palace, he scattered his grandmother's ashes. His body, as thin as a stick, still wanted to make a pilgrimage. It was a journey of 1,100 kilometers. Even a physically strong adult man would need to muster a lot of courage for such a journey. Yet he didn't hesitate. From Lhasa to Yamdrakyamso, he began his pilgrimage. Later, his journey was live-streamed, gaining more and more attention. After he admitted that he was an orphan, I released the essay I had written at the right time. Let me bear all the sins. Victor could then leave this world clean and free of regrets. But Diana came running back, crying and making a fuss, annoying as hell. Even though Victor's body was falling apart, his eyes grew brighter. I felt that the fire that had always burned in Victor since high school had returned. He rejected Diana and decided to continue his pilgrimage, intending to die here. I didn't try to persuade him anymore. Once Victor made up his mind, no one could change it. Whether it was using his identity as the Song family's young master to win Diana back then or making this pilgrimage now, I stayed by his side. Victor died under the sky at Namso. I buried him with a smile. He said, we cried when we were born. Why shouldn't we smile when we say goodbye? I looked up at the blinding sun, my eyes stinging with tears. Brother, you really chose a good place. In the next life, I, Marco, will still be brothers with Victor.